These are the same kinds of questions. How do I live with the ocean? How do I work with the ocean? And that need to know is just getting more and more intense. It's always kind of been at the core of oceanography, at least for the last roughly 60 years. It's just gotten actually in some sense more interesting. And welcome everyone to The Sea Has Many Voices, the uh, weekly podcast on, on the oceans. Uh, this week I'm with uh, Dr. Mark Abbott, the President and CEO of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. And I'm really happy to be sitting outside the, uh, the what's this building called again? It's the, called Losos. Losos. Uh, it's, it's all about ocean observing systems. And to give you a sense, we're sitting next to floating buoys, we're sitting next to uh, National Science Foundation logo, which is, we're sitting next to uh, the things of our trade, our oceanographic trade, tools that I, I love to see. And uh, Mark, Mark runs the world's, uh, what, how do you describe Woods Hole, which is called HUI in the acronym, yeah. yeah. How do you describe so it quickly? The Woods Hole Oceanographic is the largest private institution devoted to ocean research. Most other inst ocean institutions are part of universities or they're national labs or they're a lot smaller. Okay. Okay. Now I'm really interested in uh, something we talked about a minute ago, and that is, you, you mentioned that you came here because of uh, various factors, including the, uh, the, the, what you just said, the, 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 the largeness of it, the, the innovation of it, the science of it. But you also talked about how it was addressing problems of the day or needs of the day in society, and this is something that I've. I've seen happen in at Hui and at other uh, what I would call were originally ivory tower organizations. And for our listeners, ivory tower science organizations are organizations where scientists have traditionally been allowed to study whatever they want, and that's been the hallmark of science, not influenced by any policy agenda, any funding agenda, and therefore knowledge is pure and uh, and, and of the highest quality. But that's been changing, and I think it's been changing at Hui too. And I'd like to hear about that. That's a great question. You know, we were talking earlier about how the Navy in the 1960s needed to know how the ocean worked. Biology, chemistry, physics, geology, all elements of the ocean. And that I was think, to conduct warfare, yeah. basically. I think today that need to know is even more intense mm -hmm. and comes from a broader set of demands. How are hurricanes going to change and how is that going to affect construction along the coast? How are fisheries changing under uh, expansion of ocean acidification or low oxygen waters? These are the same kinds of questions. How do I live with the ocean? How do I work with the ocean? And that need to know is just getting more and more intense. It's always kind of been at the core of oceanography, at least for the last roughly 60 years. It's just gotten actually in some sense more interesting. It's yeah. more diverse, there's a lot more unpredictability. You know, I've run into it myself, Mark, and it's, you know, you, you, meet, you meet certain scientists from the, that are, how do I, how do I word this right way? I want to, I want to say, I'll just say the truth. I want to say old school ivory tower school who want to study what they study and they don't want there to be any application of the research necessarily. They don't mind if there is, but they're, they're not heading for that. Their world is the, let's just use for example, the leafy sea dragon, because I do remember a guy that studied leafy sea dragons. Yeah. And that's all he studied in his lab, and he didn't want to uh, be influenced by overfishing. He didn't want to be talking to me about climate change uh, unless it affected this. He wanted to do his research. He wanted it to be pure. He didn't want it to be applied. He didn't want a problem brought to his office and have him solve it. He wanted to be able to follow his instincts wherever they were. And that, that is something that scientists have always uh, valued and, and have wanted to, to have. But today, the planet is, is changing at a rate that it's never faster than it's ever changed through industrialization, through population growth, through climate change. And uh, I mean, I'll voice my opinion. I feel that scientists need to step up now and we need to uh, not have uh, the total luxury to study whatever we want. We need to apply what we what we know. I'd like to hear your your views personally, and then you can separate those from your institution and, and how you guys are oriented to this. Because I because I've seen, I believe there's been a change that I've noticed. Yeah. No, again, a great conversation because you could say I'll just do whatever anybody asks, yeah. and I'll just do that. And in some sense, that's what a lot of environmental consulting organizations do, and that's great. They answer very specific that's questions. Right. 
On the other extreme, it's I'll just do whatever I want. I think actually if you look almost all the sciences, they're, they're somewhere in the middle of that spectrum. And I would say ocean sciences, particularly in the last 60 years, there's that balance between that free-form curiosity driven and that need to know. And you want both of those. Because if you just say, I need to know this problem and give me that answer, in some sense you've kind of already narrowed down that curiosity, that unexpected, really can open things up. I'll give an example yeah. where it used to be that we thought we knew how what we call the subtropical gyres, the, the centers of the ocean, north of the equator, they were deserts, you know, we thought nothing lived there, the water was really deep blue, uh, we thought it was a pretty simple ecosystem. The more we studied it, the more we understood, wow, this is a really dynamic ecosystem and there's a lot, there are whole life forms that we didn't expect that are, there's a whole nother kind of food chain, what we call the microbial food chain, uh, that we didn't know existed and we understood more about the ocean. That informed how we think about managing the ocean. So if you just say, I'm gonna answer that question, it can become very short term and narrow and you get surprised. Mm. If it's just curiosity driven, well, you may not answer the important questions. So where that balance is, wow. is a really interesting point. Wow, you really helped me. That's a great answer, Mark. You said you, some scientists do what they're asked, and that's a, a, maybe the business model. Some scientists want to do what they want, which is what most scientists are like. Yeah. And what was the third category? Well, I, 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 let me add the third category, because you yeah. didn't have one. I would say then there's what scientists need to do in order for, to enable civilization, as we know, to survive on this planet. Yeah, that's sort of the longer, longer state, that sort of middle question in I there. would argue yeah. that that's an important, yeah an important part. And I'll tell you, um, I've been honored, this is a disclosure, to be on the Board of Governors at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution for some 10, 14 years. <clears throat> and uh, I was asked about 10 years ago by some, some staff here how you do conservation. They wanted to know, because I'd been involved and yeah. a lot of my work yeah. was applied. And I said, what do you mean? How do you do conservation? And they said, well, how do you do what you do? I said, what, what do you mean? And I was at the time working on uh, creating or enabling, helping uh, Pacific Island countries create marine protected areas. Mm -hmm. And oh, I said, oh, that. And they said, yeah, that. How do you do that? And I said, it's all about relationships. I said, you just got to go meet people and talk to them and then, uh, and then do your research that you're doing and you'll... Uh, you'll be able to, to tie that up. And since then, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, HUI, has uh, become a partner with me and others in the Pacific, and I want to thank you for that, because uh, you brought your team in to help us study uh, reefs, coral reefs, bleaching, which is a form of death reefs uh, encountered from heating, uh, by bringing in some of your, your big assets, I call them toys, but some of your big uh, coring tools, tools that you'd core down into a coral reef and look back seven, eight hundred years, which we weren't able to do before that. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, we were doing what I called one fish, two fish research, where you jump in the water and you kind of swim around and record what you have. So you've, you've joined a lot of efforts your, your staff have here, and I, and I thank you for that. So the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution has, I, I think, uh, keeps the highest standard. I, 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 I consider you the highest standard along with a few other organizations in oceanography but you've also adjusted your path a little bit I think to deal with the world's issues of the day. Right. Is that a fair statement? I think that's a fair statement. Some of it is it, it's not just a generational thing but a lot of it it is that people are younger particularly our younger scientists are really interested in impact they they know their work's important and they want to actually see that there's a connection between what they do basically seven days a week they are they only work quote five days a week but most of them are out you know working at home or on the weekends out in the field or whatever uh, they want to see that impact to feel like their work is important well most of most of our world mark is they're passion driven yeah. Everybody I know works seven days a week, 24 yeah. hours a day, yeah. and I'm proud of it. I love it. Yeah. I used to get, I used to worry about it sometimes because my friends and whatnot would say, yeah, I work too much, and I said, oh, I better slow down. But then I realized I like it. Yeah. Why, why should I stop?
Yep. Now, uh, I want to thank you, Mark, and I want to come back to our conversation. Thank you very much.